evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Rogan Priest runs were pretty recent, so here with Papa Boris's Hearthstone Arena time, we're gonna go ahead and grab the Mighty Shaman. Starting off with the rare. All right, the Injured Blade Master is one of my favorite three drops, but we'll take the Sunwalker here. Let's not miss a chance to get this guy. Sometimes, you know, if your opponent doesn't have the Silence or the, uh, you know, Polymorph or Hex or whatever, uh, this thing can just be a total brick wall and wreck your opponent's day. Hmm, the health gain is nice. I, I'm almost tempted by the Dalaran Mage, just because the spell damage is so good for shamans, like, so good with uh, Forked Lightning. It's tempting. I mean, the 1-4 is obviously not nearly as good as a 3-3. Back when this was a 2-4, it would be no question. I would take this as a 2-4. No question about it. 1-4, ah, oh, man, it makes me question things. We'll try to get some other spell damage, like a Kobold Geomancer, and we'll grab the Earthen Ring Farseer here. Fire Elemental. Oh, these are really good cards. Damn. I'm sad to be passing them, but Fire Elemental. Seriously. Okay, Bloodlust. You know, the more I play, the less impressed I am by that card. The Raid Leader is really great if you can keep some totems on the board and you can drop down and attack with all of them, but the Worgen's just good on his own, so I will take the Worgen instead. Ooh, wow. What a tough call here. Lava Burst. I mean, it's hard to imagine passing on, on that for anything, right? Five damage for three mana. But Feral Spirit is incredibly good. I mean, mages can shred those wolves, and there are other ways your opponent can deal with them as well, but this has just put so much power on the board, and with Taunt, no less. I'm going to do something crazy here. I'm going to take it over the Lava Burst. We'll keep an eye on this during the draft, okay? We'll keep an eye, and we'll see how much I regret this Feral Spirit not being a Lava Burst. Uh, well, there's only one playable here, and that is Chilvin Yeti, so let's just take it. Hmm, card draw is good, but let's take an Axe. I mean, this is nice card advantage, so we'll be happy to have that up. I uh, don't have that much taunt yet, and these, of course, are pretty well unplayable cards, so we'll take the Warden. Not the most exciting thing, of course. Frostwolf Warlord can be a powerhouse for shamans, for sure. I'm going to grab the Lightning Bolt here. I already took Feral Spirit over a Lava Burst, so let's not go too crazy passing on removal, lest we not see any more. Oh my god, one of my favorite cards. This is one of my favorite cards, for sure. Gad is an Auctioneer. Uh, you, you can go totally crazy with this. Now, at the moment, I just have Feral Spirit and Lightning Bolt a spell, so it's not super great, but shamans do have a lot of cheap spells. Lightning Bolt, Fork, Lightning, Rock Butter Weapon, all are commons. Their zero mana, like, ancestral whatever thing is kind of garbage, but still, um, if he draws one card, he's a little bit worse than an Azure Drake. If he draws two cards, he's bonker sauce. Okay. The Ancient Mage can be really good, because you're a shaman and you've got totems. At the same time, I like the Mana Titan Totem a lot. I mean, card draw is, is just nice, and if you can protect it, it's it's unbelievable. I'm going to take it. I think the card draw is more important there than that spell damage. Okay, I do like Earthshock a lot, but we currently have all a grand total of zero two-mana creatures, so while it's sad to pass on the Silence plus the damage, I'm going to grab the Berserker here, which is, as we all know, the best to drop in the game. Lightning Bolt? Yes, please. Lightning Bolt? Yes, please. Ah, uh, man, I'm regretting that I took that other Raging Worgen over the... Raid Leader, not that that was a bad decision, just, you know, kind of sad that this is the, the case here. We've got one, two, three, four three-mana creatures, and three-mana is, like, my least favorite mana level to spike. I'm going to grab the Abusive Sergeant. Works really well with Totems. I don't think I'd want to ever play him on turn one as a Shaman, but it works really, really well with Totems. So we're going to go ahead and grab him up here. Ah, uh, crap! Now I regret taking the Mana Tide Totem over the Pimp, because... I don't want two, I don't think. I think I think that's a bit greedy. We'll take the Arcane Golem. This is a late game card. Very rarely will I actually play this in the early game, but later on it can be a charger for some extra surprise damage. So the Stormforged Axe, definitely a very good card, but I feel like I kind of need a little bit of early plays. Uh, the Call Master is tempting as he, as, as he, she, or it always is, but I've already got the uh, Manatide Totem and the Gadsden Auctioneer for some card draw. We're going to take the Fairy Dragon. It's, it's one of the best two drops alongside the Amani Berserker. And I, again, I, I want to make sure I have some early plays in the stack. We're more than halfway through, and we so far have nothing. This is nice card draw, but the Dark Iron Dwarf is fantastic with totems and just fantastic overall, so we're going to go ahead and pick him up. Bloodlust. Oh, man, I'm just not that thrilled with that card. It's, it's dead all the time. And then, sure, sometimes you'll win the game with it, but I just, I just don't like the, specul the speculative nature of it. Let's get some more card draw on a pretty decent body. Second Lava Burst of the draft. Normally, that would be a Windmill Slam, but I'm going to take Lightning Storm, and the reason why is uh, it's the Shaman's only form of mass removal, so you want to make sure you don't miss the chances to get it. Okay, Hex is the Shaman's only source of single target, get rid of anything, so I'm going to have to make sure I get at least one of those in my deck. Another Mana Tide Totem! Oh, man. <sighs> Imp Master, I don't have... How, how much synergy do I have with Imp Master? I've got uh, the Abusive Sergeant can buff the Imps. 
I've got the uh, Dark Iron Dwarf can buff him up. Uh, I don't really have that much else to do with the imps. I'm going to take Mana Wraith here. It's a pretty good card, and it's a two-drop. I'm still a bit low on those. Okay. Unbound Elemental, it's a three-drop. Let's take a look exactly at how many three-drops we have. This counts as a creature. So one, not really, because this is a late game, two, three. The Mana Tide Totem is a bit tricky to play on turn three. If your opponent has, like, an empty board, then sure, play it. But if there's anything out there, you don't really want to put this thing down. So I've really got three three-drops. From four drops, we have one, two, three, four. So although the, the spike looks really big here, if you look at the stuff that we have here, the Lightning Storm, the Hex, the Arcane Golem, and the Totem, a lot of these three-drops aren't really three-drops. So I'm going to take the Unbent Elemental here for some, for some big old beef. Okay, I'm not a big fan of this. Nor am I a big fan of this, but we'll take it, I guess, because it has, you know, a potentially useful ability. Oh, God, we're starting to see nothing but trash. Well, we'll take the Taunter, then. We're, we're a little bit low on, on Taunt in this deck, so it'd be nice to get. Hmm. Ooze was, would be nice to have as an out-against-weapons, but I do, as I mentioned before, like having a one-drop in the deck. Now, granted, the Argent Squire is not as good for Shamans, because Shamans don't have a hero ability that damages the opponent. So here, I guess, we'll grab the Ooze to have an out-against-weapons. Well... This draws a card off of the, the uh, Gadgets and Auctioneer. So if there's ever a time I would think about playing it, it'd be here. But let's get a Silence, I guess. Uh, this card bugged out. I don't, I don't see what's written there. What is that? Mur? 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 Is it like a Murloc? I don't know what that is. We'll take, we'll take the Silence here. I don't want to take it if I don't know what it is. Still a bit low on Taunt, so although the curve is kind of sucky, I'm going to take the Grizzly for that purpose. And another Chilwind Yeti is nice. Uh, we didn't see that much Endgame here, did we? Oh god, this this is a problem. So, I do end up with like a fairly low curve, so the Doom Hammer is worth considering. I saw someone use Farsight really amazingly well. The mana cost reduction persists, so you don't have to play it right away. You can play it like the following turn for cheap. But I'm going to take the Faceless Manipulator, because man, I got nothing here for endgame. I got a Sunwalker and Fire Elemental, the end. I had a Ravenholt Assassin, which I think was in the same pack as like a Lightning Storm, so I couldn't really take it, plus it's not even a good card anyway. And I had a Frost Elemental at the same time as a Hex. I guess I could have taken it and passed on the Hex, just for the sake of endgame. And only one Fire Elemental. Man, uh, this deck's going to have a problem. The thing is, though, that it does have a lot of good 4-mana creatures, with like the Chillwind Yetis and the Dark Iron Dwarf in there. And it's got some decent card draw opportunities. Uh, it's just a bit lacking for endgame, which uh, it's not exactly my fault. I, I guess I could have tried to draft more aggro once I saw the endgame wasn't forthcoming. I just kept hoping that some of the later game picks would give me big beef. Radiant Urza the Priest. So here... Ah, oh man, I'm going to have to mulligan this back. It's not usable yet. I'll keep the Albi in case of Light Wells and Light Spawns. And then do I keep these? I can't I can't keep a Dark Iron Dwarf. I, it's just too speculative, and there's nothing to buff. So we're going to have to subsist on Taunt until turn 3 when this Yeti is likely to get coined out. Ah, okay, okay. So this this fixes things up a little bit. We'll probably play Feral Spirits, eat the Overload, and then the Yeti can come on turn 5. Now another option would be actually to coin out the Feral Spirit on turn 2, and then on turn 3 I can't do anything. And then I can play the Yeti right away on turn 4. The thing is, if I make a totem now and then this, I get an extra totem. And then also, the, the Yeti is delayed by a turn. If I pl make the play such that the Yeti is playable on turn 4, that means sacrificing a totem because of the overload here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to coin out the Feral Spirit. And the reason why is that on my next turn, I can still play Lightning Bolt if I need to. And this is an insane amount of power and toughness for a priest to deal with at the moment. So I have one bad turn here. I, I eat some overload. At the moment, uh, Lightning Bolt, I guess, isn't really super great because um, it would give me overload again, so I couldn't play the Chillwind Yeti on turn four. So that would actually kind of suck. I'd only really do it if I felt like I absolutely have to. Like, uh, probably I'd have to, like, if it's like a Raging Worgen, I'd probably have to Lightning Bolt that. Ah, Golem, that's annoying. Mm hmm. You know what? Ah, jeez. I'm just going to kill it. It means I'm delaying the Yeti. I'll have to play the monkey first. But I really want to kill that thing. I, I don't want that thing getting buffed or anything. Let's just go ahead and kill it off. And yeah, no Yeti on turn 4. Yeti's still pretty good to play on turn 5. Uh, on next turn, I can still Totem and Lightning Bolt, or this and Lightning Bolt. So he's just spending Holy Smite. So I'm getting some card advantage, as you can see. I got 6 to 5, thanks to the Feral Spirit. Ah, he has... 
You want to start collecting. So this is threatening to run in, heal, and draw a card. Hmm. I could silence it, of course, and then my owl is hiding behind the taunt. This would then allow me to play uh, the Yeti next turn. Oh no, I can play the Yeti next turn regardless. Haha! -ha. Let's just lightning bolt this thing. Make a totem and swing for two. More taunt. All right. Well, we got like one of our two endgame creatures. This cannot be shadow worded. It can, of course, be mind controlled. But I did top deck or not top deck, but I do did draw my one hex here. So if my opponent doesn't draw anything that is necessary to be hexed, uh, I can hex this in case it gets mind controlled. Hmm, that is a pain. And, well, if I play the Yeti, he can run into, no, he can't run into the Yeti because I've got a Taunter. Huh, hmm. I can play, I can just play the Yeti. I can't kill this, I can't kill this unless I use Hex. I'm not that inclined to use Hex on this thing, though. I could silence it with my Owl, then it's a 4-4 and just swing on by. Then I can kill my 2-3 and then I can kill it with the Owl. No, I can't, because he'll heal it, because he's a priest. Oh, God, this doesn't look good. Let's just play the Yeti, then. So the idea now is that I can silence this thing with the owl and then kill it with the Yeti and then live to tell about it. But, yeah, that, that abomination was about as good as abominations get, I have to say. Okay, so there's that now. So I've got two things I really want to silence. Shoot. Balls. Oh, man. All right, let's go for the aggressive play. I'm going to play the Imani Berserker. I'm going to go ahead and kill this Abomination. Enrage my Berserker. And I'm also going to silence this Light Spawn. And to, so as not to be grossly overextended against Holy Nova, and rather than to play the Fairy Dragon, I'm just going to make a totem. Healing totem, that's cute. Well, it heals us up. Luckily, this is still enraged, although if it lives a turn, it's going to get healed up to full and then stop being enraged. So, that Abomination was amazingly good for my opponent. This is this is one of my only, like, big beef cards that I've got. Unless I draw my Faces Manipulator and can copy this thing. So I've got this... And then this stuff is all kind of junky, and he's got a lot of health. I wasn't really able to deal damage to him. Despite the really early drop of the Feral Spirit, I just wasn't quite able to... And in the, in the Chill Wind Yeti follow-up, I wasn't quite able to deal enough damage. You love my new recipe. This is interesting. I guess now this thing isn't considered damaged anymore. Nightblade! Oh, man. If I lose to a deck with Nightblade, my shame will be eternal. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this. Kill this to get enraged again, I suppose. And yeah, we'll just we'll swing for damage. I mean, yes, this thing it can get like power word shielded and it can get like uh, you know inner fired, but I'm not gonna speculatively kill it off. I'm just gonna live with it. Now this guy is pretty good. What is his maximum health? I, I think his maximum health is five. So when the healing totem shoots again, he'll stop being enraged. That is, of course, if we live that long. Yes, yeah, so light spawn number two. Man, if only I had some pandas and I could get another copy of this. Oh, jeez, what is this? Okay. Well, you do what you do. Hmm. So, what do I Dark Iron Dwarf? I mean, I could put all my eggs in one basket here and just make this guy a 7 4, kill the Doomsayer. Um. Pop Divine Shield to kill that. I mean, I could, I could like, let this Doomsayer happen, I suppose. I would just deal 9, 11 damage, take him down to 15. That eh, doesn't seem quite good enough. All right, we're just going to we're just gonna go for the gold here. Let's kill this thing. Um, light Spawn? I mean, Light Spawn is actually a problem because once I pop, if I pop the Divine Shield killing this Nightblade... Then the light spawn will actually just straight up kill my Sunwalker, which is a bit sad, unless I throw the owl into it. Let's do this. I'm gonna just um pop the divine shield like that. And we'll make a totem. It seems reasonable. And Yeah, I hate to do this, but I'll kill this thing. So how vulnerable am I to Holy Nova? Not much. Okay, we'll go ahead and play the fairy dragon then. Dropping more power onto the board here. So my guy stops being enraged, but I but he's still got the uh 
the Dark Iron Dwarf. So the 4-5, I guess that, 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 that crazed alchemist didn't really work out for my opponent there. Ooh, Thought Steel's a bit scary. There's still a Fire Elemental in here. That's no good. Crap. I always hate it when you haven't drawn your good cards and your priest opponent plays Thought Steel. It just never feels good. Well, let me just wait and see what he does with 6 mana. I mean, this is a lot of damage. This is 12, 15, 16 damage. Got a lot of power here. This is the third Light Spawn. Oh my god. I still don't really want to use Hex. I'm afraid something worse is going to be coming. What does he have here? A Lightning Bolt? Okay. So that's funny. Just watching a Priest play Lightning Bolt. Okay. Well, seems reasonable enough. I, can't, I don't have any way to enrage this thing. Manitide Totem. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and um play this thing. And, yeah, we'll hex this. We'll hex it. I mean, now I don't have anything really great to mind control, so I don't particularly care if, uh, if, if, he, if he mind controls something. I'll just, you know, whatever he, he mind controls, I'll just kill it. And I got this Manatide Totem, which is the boss hoss here, giving me further advantage. It is likely to survive, I think. I mean, what's the priest going to do? Holy Nova doesn't do it. He needs, like, spell damage plus Holy Nova. And a Mana Wraith. Did he Thought Steal that for me? It is a rare, so he might not have had it on his own. Okay. Lightning Storm, I think, seems a bit excessive here. Let's go ahead and just do this. Seems really straightforward. We'll trigger the Enrage on that. Also make my creatures playable. Unfortunately, since, um... I have six creatures. If I play any one, any more of my creatures, I won't be able to make him any more totems. Let's just go ahead and make a totem. I know it's going to be spell damage. It's the last one that I had available. It'd be really funny if he had a, a big game hunter. Actually, that would that would kill my berserker. And the manatee totem is just basically the nail on the coffin for my opponent here because it's giving me so much card advantage. Is crazy. Mind control. Okay. Well, all things considered, it's really not that big of a deal. I was actually going to heal it up. <laughs> that makes it unenraged. That's funny. Okay, so actually, <laughs> this is really funny. My, my damage potential is really pitiable here. But he's a 10 mana, so I can now play the Arcane Golem. And I can also use the Stormforge Dax to kill off the Berserker with the help of my Fairy Dragon here. Oh, I did that in the wrong order. Oops. I took unnecessary damage. So we'll just swing, swing, and uh, play the big wall. My damage potential still leaves something to be desired. I got one, five, six damage potential. <laughs> Lol. I guess eight. Temple Enforcer, okay. Good card. And it's a six, six, twelve. Well, I'm just gonna be ignoring that, I think. And pounding away here with my six damage. I could make room for the Fire Elemental by throwing away this totem. In fact, I will do this thing, because I think that's actually worth it. Let's hit him in the face, hit him in the face, hit him in the face, and for good measure, we'll hit him in the face. Okay, we're threatening the kill. What a weird game. I felt like I was behind most of the time, but then this Manatide totem just got to sit uncontested. This is misleading, by the way. He actually um, thought stole, so I guess I'm actually not that far ahead, all things considered. With that, with because of the thought steal, and did he ever use the other Rush Clark? I don't know where else he drew cards. Hmm. Anyway, well, that's all well and good, but he is now dead because he's got a hole in the head. Right, that was a good game. I I don't know. This deck I would say is sort of middling. No rock fighter weapon, no forked lightning, not a whole lot of end game, and you know the other cards are fine. I would say, but. Could have, could have been a, better, been a better deck. Hopefully we'll get at least two wins so we can mop up that daily quest. I haven't been playing much Constructed lately because I heard that, you know, your Constructed ranking influences your arena matchmate, your arena opponents, which is total hearsay, by the way, and not at all confirmed. But I just hate the idea that getting good at Constructed will make me play better, or will make, will make, will make me see harder opponents in the arena. Okay, so... This is a very tricky hand. I'm going to send back the Fire Elemental. I'm going to keep all this, which may seem odd, but basically the idea here is that um, I want to keep Lightning Storm in case of Blood Imps. I want to keep Lightning Bolt just because, you know, removal is good to keep around early on in case of, like, a Flame Imp or something. 
And the Mana Wraith I top decked, but the Feral Spirit's actually nice just to have it as a 3-drop, assuming I don't overload on turn 2. Okay, this is actually a very nice. I don't see any real reason to coin out the Mana Wraith. Well, I do actually. I mean, if I coin out the Mana Wraith, I can still make a Totem and I can still make Feral Spirits. I am actually going to coin the Mana Wraith out. This could really inhibit my opponent. I mean, if he had nothing on turn 1, he, in theory, should have nothing on turn 2 other than to Life Tap, because now the most that he could play is a 1-drop. I was a second player, so I had the coin. So either he removes this, or he's stuck. This is the card he just top decked, so it could now be a 1-drop. So many ah, he did just top deck the 1-drop. Fair enough. So here's the thing, if I lightning bolt this thing, I can't make Feral Spirit next turn, but I'm gonna go for it. Rockbiter weapon would have been a whole lot better there, but I didn't see any of the draft. We're just gonna have to content ourselves with some some totems. Alright, he's had enough of these shenanigans. Looks like that thing is gonna eat a drain life. Fair enough. I'm overloaded, so no Grizzly for me, which, or anything. Oh, it's really sad. But I'll make a Totem. Yeah, that Lightning Bolt Overload actually is extremely severe. If without it, I could have made a 3-drop, and then played Chill Wind Yeti. Now I'm, I'm like a creature behind, which is actually really, really bad. So maybe I could have left that Voidwalker alive. And maybe if I lose this game, I will say that was the mistake that, that cost me to lose it. Magma Rager. Ah, uh, well, it's a terrible card. And there's a number of ways to deal with it. Feral Spirit being but one of them. Seems very unlikely my opponent will get past this. I didn't want to throw away the Unmind Elemental for it. This is not. This is, doesn't look that bad here, but I mean, against a mage, a mage can just spend two mana and kill this thing. This card is unholy bad. I got the best deals anyway. Ooh, that is scary, and I can't deal with it at the moment, so it's just going to have to sit there. Well, that definitely sucks. That sucks a lot of dongs, to be sure. We'll play this... The idea there being that if I Lightning Storm now, I've got a coin flip to kill this thing, thanks to the spell damage totem. And, well, well now if, he, if he attacks this, I'm guaranteed to kill it. Hopefully he doesn't get more than, like, one card off of it. Hopefully. Okay, well, he's going to heal it up, which is frustrating, because now a Lightning Storm is a coin flip again. Hopefully. Hopefully. He has no spells. All right, no spells. Great. Awesome. Rock on. Brewski. Hmm, do I play the Lightning Storm? So it's a coin flip to kill this, it'll kill this, it'll pop Divine Shield, I can then finish this off, and live to tell about it. If I, if I whiff on the coin flip, though, that's sad. I can fire Elemental this, it's not quite good enough. Draw a card, and then I'm making a totem, that seems sad. All right, we're gonna go for it here, we're gonna go for the coin flip. Because it boosts my dude, which is really nice. Alright, win the coin flip, that is very important. His Gatchin Auctioneer dies. Make the beast. His best card here probably would be a Hellfire, because that would clear out my totem plus my creatures. He seems not to have a Hellfire. Another Drain Light, that's not a very good card. I'm a little bit dubious of him having two of these in his deck. It's really not very good. Cobra? Well, I can't fire Elemental it because of the Overload, sadly. But, um, what I can do is just play my Gadsden Auctioneer. Oh, okay, hang on a minute. This is a little bit silly to play when you have no spells in your hand, right? So I'm not going to use up all my mana. We're going to go ahead and draw a card here, see what it is. Abusive Sergeant is not relevant. And we'll, we'll, we'll actually just trade it in. I don't want to leave this around, you know, in case of whatever, whatever. I just don't want this getting buffed and killing my bear and still being on the board, all that stuff. So we got card advantage against a Warlock, which is kind of impressive. Even discounting the totem, I've got, you know, six cards, soon to be seven to his four. Thanks to that Lightning Storm. All right, that is going to catch him up for sure. Again, he has a four toughness creature, which is very frustrating. Five toughness. Oh, and I spent my Lightning Storm. I don't think I have any other outs. No fork Lightning for me. Balls! Previously, Abusive Sergeant would have let me kill this thing. Now, it does not. I could, of course, use Fire Elemental. And that will then trade my no mission venture in for it. I could... Oh, man, this lightning bolt was previously going to kill this thing. Freaking blood imp. Yeah. I could do this. Lightning bolt, draw a card, and do that. But let, let's hang on to this guy. Maybe he'll get better later. Let's go ahead then and just uh, play out some stuff. 
We'll do this. We'll do this. We'll get another totem. And we'll get rid of that, because you don't want to have warlocks with spell damage. So I didn't really lose any card advantage. These guys are bodies. They elevated my Gnomish Inventor and killed the Azure Drake. So we kind of, I guess he and I both sort of broke even. But because I already spent my Lightning Storm and never saw any Forked Lightnings. Shit, he has Hellfire. Well, he's going to get to kill a couple of creatures with it. And my Totems. And he still has mana to play. So I hope this is something that will die to Lightning Bolt or Fire Elemental. Damn, he had the Hellfire. Well, at least that cleared out the Blood Imp. So that's, that's, a, that's a victory. Summoning Portal. Okay. Succubus. Well, he's really a little bit low on cards. He can life tap and have a total of three cards. I'm not that worried about that summoning portal. What I'm going to do here is get this Gadgeton Auctioneer out here. Well, Lightning Bolt that thing. Draw a card. Wind Speaker. Okay. I think there is actually value to playing this Ooze. I mean, a Warlock obviously doesn't have any weapons, so that, that ability is not relevant. And having the damage here, I think, is important at this stage of the game where I'm ahead on cards, but it could, it could go bad at any moment. Want to have as much damage as I possibly can here. So the flame imp, the discount on the summoning portal is totally irrelevant. Okay, that is quite relevant, unfortunately. Luckily, I have this fire elemental, which can kill this with the help of the ooze. Ah, I can also hex it. I think that seems legit. So what we're going to do is we're going to hex this thing. Which also draws me a card. Sunwalker, huh? Let's actually just go ahead and do some killing. Fire elementals on that seems good. We can do this. We can get rid of the summoning portal. All seems very good. So my opponent is way behind on cards now. Behind on life and behind on the board. It's good, good, good time to be alive. And this wind speaker, which I is a card I'm not, which I was a card I do not hold in high esteem, is actually pretty good when you can put it on a fire elemental. No, I take it all back. Well, actually, this guy deals 4 damage. You don't think of this as an aggressive creature, because it's a 5 mana 4-4, four, four, so it's like the stats are below what they should be, but, I mean, it is it is a pretty hard hitter. Let's, let's feel the power of the winds here. And, yeah, we'll just play this. This is sort of like I like to say, I feel like I'm saying this phrase a lot lately, the nail in the coffin here. It's just making sure that I keep on getting cards, so even if he deals with what, with what he's he's got to deal with at the moment, which is hard already, I, I get even more gas in my tank, as it were. We're actually doing okay on cards. He hasn't life tapped much. Does he have another Hellfire? That would be hilarious. Mortal Coil, also very good. Hellfire might have been like one of his few outs here. It would clear out everything with the spell damage. Hey? Eh? Is going a life tap? Why is he floating this card over here? Shadow Bolt. Ah, he's, he got to kill my Wind Fury thing. How sad. Okay. Well... So what we'll do here is we'll play this, and uh, I think I should be adequate protection for a mana tight totem. We're going to get some more damage through, and we're threatening to kill in a variety of ways while also drawing more and more cards. This has already paid for itself. My opponent is in dire trouble. Ready for action! <laughs> Ready for action! Acolyte, why not play the Acolyte first and then the Succubus? I mean, not that it matters, because you still lose, but it would have been a good move, I think. Let's see, I think this is a newer player here. Uh, yeah, I, I suspected he was newer because of uh, more than one drain life in his deck. And I think that little misstep kind of confirms it. Alright, well anyway, those are, those are a couple games. I believe both that Priest and that Warlock were slightly newer players, which is totally fine. I mean, there's lots of beta keys going out, so it makes sense to have more new players in the game. Very excited to see how the game scape will look after the game goes into open beta whether things get easier or harder for us old grizzled vets in any case if you enjoyed the video i'd love it if you supported my channel by liking the video and or by subscribing to the channel i thought the game was going to freeze there <laughs> and if you want to see how this run ends if you can see whether i make it to six wins or not my new benchmark of success then stay tuned because i'm going to be posting the rest of the game shortly i'll see you in a bit